Welcome, Shabbat Shalom, Boker Tov, Tzoharayim Tovim, which means good morning and good afternoon, depending on your coast, um, or perhaps you're in the Midwest. I know we actually have a few people who are towards the middle of our continent. Um, welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker. I have the honor of being both our executive director and our resident yoga instructor. Here are my notes about props for today. Um, if you have access to a strap, it's optional, but um, later in the practice, um, we'll see how we can put it to good use. So a strap or a piece of rope is one uh, prop that will serve you well. Um, blocks are gonna be key to a part of our practice. So two blocks or thick hardcover books will serve you well. And I've really been into giving everybody the option to use a pillow um, either at the opening or end of the practice so that we can get in some restorative poses. This is a pretty unique virtual yoga studio, not just because it's entirely online, but because it has become an opportunity to blend the wisdom and embodied practice of yoga with the traditions and insights of Judaism. And ever since the start of 2021, we've been using this as an opportunity to explore a, a practice within Judaism that's called Musar. Musar is an ethical way um, and it encompasses a series of soul traits. And the idea is that if, as we go through our weeks, our months, our year, if we focus one soul trait at a time, we can work our way towards ethical behavior and towards being decent human beings, which is so needed in this world right now. And so each week we look at a different soul trait. And we've looked at compassion, we've looked at, at gratitude, we've looked at humility and patience and order and equanimity. We've covered a lot of ground. And this week we have arrived at the soul trait of generosity, um, which in Hebrew is known as nedivut. And in Sanskrit, in the language of yoga, there is an idea called dana, which means generosity. And the goal of our practice today and the, the wisdom of both Judaism and yoga is to create the conditions for open-heartedness, to practice physically opening up our heart, which puts us in the state physically, emotionally, socially, to be generous human beings. In the words of Rabbi Moshe Chaim Muzato, who's one of the sages, one of the great sages of Musar, external motions stimulate the internal. So as we move through our practice today, we are going to physically embody a range of external motions and actions which will stimulate the internal desires of our heart to be generous. So with all that being said, my common disclaimer is that as we move through the practice, please be mindful of where you are at in your body and understand that there is a difference between the zone of heat and challenge, which is really healthy and that's part of yoga practice and pain. Don't cross over. If you feel that you're ever crossing into that zone of pain, that you should immediately back off, come into a previous pose, take a rest. And the beauty of being on a line together is that nobody's watching your practice. So you can take a child's pose. You can lay down in Shavasana any time you want. And that could be a really intelligent decision. Our first pose to really get into this mood of opening up our chest and heart. I'm gonna suggest that you start with two blocks or thick hardcover books, medium height. And already you have an option to be true to yourself. You can make this restorative by placing a pillow on top of these blocks, sitting with your tush just at the outside of the bottom block, your knees bent, arms out and start to lay down. So you can have your pillow on top of the blocks. You can take your pillow off.
in which case you want to be very mindful that your bottom block is just underneath your shoulder blades. The top block is underneath your head. Either way, please have your knees bent, your feet planted on the ground. And for those yogis who want to deepen the stretch even more, lower your top block to the lowest height. Or if you need something more restorative, you might increase the height of the back block to the highest height. So take a moment to experiment the height of the blocks with whether or not you're using a pillow. And meet me laying down on the blocks with your knees bent, your feet planted on the floor. And then slowly let your knees fall open to either side of the room. Press the soles of your feet together. Supta Baddha Konasana. Your legs are in a diamond shape. Arms alongside your torso, palms facing up. What's phenomenal about this pose is that it positions your entire body to be open. We're opening up our hips, opening up our chest. Your arms are alongside your torso with your palms facing up in an open and receiving position. And now inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Inhale, drawing in air, oxygen, energy to fill your lungs and organs with life. And as you exhale, release any distractions that might be taking your mind in different directions, preventing you from being present, from being here and now. And for those of you who'd like to deepen the stretch even more, lift your arms up towards the ceiling, palms face in towards each other, and then let your arms descend towards the back of the room and grab onto opposite elbows, lowering your elbows towards the ground. So starting to Loosen up our shoulders. And if you've taken this arm extension, release your elbows, hands go towards the back of the room, and now grab onto opposite elbows the opposite way. So have a different forearm on top. Another few cycles of breath. And if your arms are an extension, release your elbows, arms lift up back towards the ceiling and come down alongside your torso. Bring your knees up to face the ceiling, feet planted again on the ground. Press your forearms into the ground and elbows into the ground to start to lift your torso up 
and come up into a seated position. Put your blocks towards the front or books towards the front of the mat. Sitting with your right shin in front of your left shin in Sukhasana. Hands on top of your knees. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Take another cycle of breath. And now hands out to the side, fingertips on the ground. Inhale, arms up, palms face in towards each other. And exhale, arms come down, rest on your fingertips. Palms face out, inhale, arms up. And exhale, lower down. Palms face out, again, inhale, arms lift up. And as you exhale, lower your right hand down towards the ground, press your right palm into the ground, fingertips face towards the back of the room. And now inhale, lengthen through the left side of your torso to lift your left arm up even more. And as you exhale, lower your left hand onto your right knee, twist over to the right. With each inhale, grow longer through your torso and the crown of your head. And with each exhale, twist over towards the right. So inhale, lengthening through all four sides of your torso. Exhale, open up your right shoulder towards the back of the room. Again, inhale, reaching up towards the ceiling. Exhale, twisting your left ribs over to the right. Take another inhale. And exhale, and now inhale, torso comes back to the center, arms float up, and exhale, arms down. Second side, inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, lower your left hand down to the ground, press your left palm into the ground, fingertips face towards the back of the room. Inhale, lengthen through the right side of your torso to lift your right arm up higher. And exhale, lower your right hand to your left knee, twisting over to the left. Just like last time, each inhale draws you higher towards the ceiling. And your exhale deepens the twist over to the left side of the room. Take two more cycles of breath. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head. Exhale, rotate your right ribs over to the left. Take one more cycle of breath at your pace. And now inhale, arms come up, torso back to the center. And exhale, arms come down. Switch the crossing of your shins so that your left shin is in front. And now interlace the palms of your hands and your fingers in back of you. Start with a bend in your elbows. And then as you exhale, start to lengthen your arms, straighten them. Knuckles reach back and down. And here is a cue you're gonna hear me give repeatedly throughout this practice. Open up your collarbones, draw your shoulder blades together. Let your chest open and heart shine forward. Couple more cycles of breath, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now switch the interlace of your fingers. And again, draw your knuckles back and down. Lift the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. 
Draw your shoulder blades together even more. Take one more cycle of breath. And then release the interlace of your fingers, hands come back over to your knees. We're going to do a modified Gomukhasana with our arms. So arms come out, inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, bend your right elbow, right hand comes towards your upper back. Take your left hand and grab onto your right elbow and hug your right elbow in towards your head. Three cycles of breath. And with your next inhale, reach your arms back up towards the ceiling and exhale, arms come down. Second side, inhale, arms come up, palms face in towards each other. Exhale, bend your left elbow, left hand lowers to your upper back. Take your right hand, grab onto your left elbow, hug that left elbow in towards your head and resume your slow and steady cycle of breath. So Judaism, like most religions, has some really wonderful points of view around this idea of generosity. And many of us are probably familiar with the idea of tzedakah in Judaism, which is one form of generosity. What's notable about generosity, uh, excuse me, about tzedakah though, is that tzedakah, which comes from the word tzedek, which means righteousness or fairness, is presented in our religion as an obligation, which is appropriate. A lot of us need that kick in the tush, the reminder, the obligation to be generous. Take another inhale and exhale, inhale both arms up and exhale arms come down. But there's another strand of generosity in Judaism called truma. Truma comes from our hearts truly being open. It's almost an unconscious response and approach to the world where your heart is just overflowing with this emotion which leads to action. And that's more what we're focused on through our practice today. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. Let your eyelids lower. Take a moment to center yourself. And I want to share a teaching from a yoga instructor named Ashley in Calgary. I'm paying tribute to our friends Michelle and Ted, who are in the virtual yoga studio in Canada, in Calgary, I believe. Montreal. And Ashley says, heart openers are widely used in yoga because many of us develop a shield or a sort of armor around our heart space from years of improper or unsupported physical posture and emotionally challenging or damaging experiences. This physical and energetic shield also restricts our emotional capacity to relate to one another to open up and show our true selves, to love, to feel compassion, empathy, and gratitude towards ourselves and others. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. So as we flow through this practice today, it's with the goal, the intention, the kavana of removing that armor letting our hearts and chest shine open. Lower your chin to your chest. Take another inhale. And exhale, lift your chin up. And let's come to a tabletop position on your hands and knees. If you have sensitive knees, now is a good time to pad your knees. You can Fold over your mat. You can slip your pillow underneath your knees. 
Be true to yourself. Your back is in a neutral position. And inhale, reach your heart and chest forward and up. Lift your tush up, arch your back into a cow position. And exhale, round your belly into cat. We're gonna do that a few times. Inhale into cow, arch your back, shine your chest and heart forward. And exhale, round your back into cat. Two more times at your pace. and then come back into a neutral position. Take your blocks or your books, and if you don't have any, that's fine. This is just a nice way to modify. And rest your elbows on top of your blocks or books or directly on the mat if you're not practicing with them. Your hips are directly above your knees and start to lower your chest down towards the ground. Interlace your fingers. Your hands are towards your upper back, lower your forehead towards the ground. This is a modified puppy pose. Everybody loves a good puppy. Great way to start being generous and open up our chest and heart. Take a few cycles of breath. So as we ease into our practice, we're taking a few of these warm-up poses to prepare our body for some deeper stretches as we move further into the practice. Take one more inhale. And exhale. Release the interlace of your fingers, start to lift your head and torso up, press your palms into the block, and then remove one block from the side, keep one block towards the top of the mat, centered, and come to lower onto your belly, place your forehead on top of the block, almost like a pillow, and then reach your right arm out towards the right. Start to rotate onto the right side of your torso. Lift your left foot up and back. Place your left foot down on the ground in back of your right leg. And you can start to lengthen your right arm forward. Turn your head over to the left. Lift your left arm up and start just by lowering your left hand onto your left hip, your top hip. If you want to deepen the pose, you can lower your top hand in back of you. A few cycles of breath, inhale and exhale. So working on opening up your shoulder, opening up the left side of your chest. Take one more inhale and exhale. Release your top arm, lift it up, lower your left hand down towards the ground and roll back onto your belly. Second side, forehead returns to the block. This time, reach your left arm out to the left. Start to rotate onto the left side of your torso. Lift your right leg up, lower it in back on the outside of your left leg. Lift your right arm up. And then you can start by lowering your right hand onto your top hip. If you want to deepen the stretch and chest opener even more, 
you can lower your top arm onto your bottom hand, so all the way out to the side of the room. Take three cycles of breath. And then float your right arm back up towards the ceiling and roll back onto your belly. Remove the block, forehead on the mat, and now reach your forearms in front of you. Lift your forehead and head up. Position your elbows directly underneath your shoulders. Lift your chest and heart up into Sphinx Pose. Spread your collarbones. Draw your shoulder blades together. And I highly recommend this as a pose that you come to as we move forward in the practice, if you need a break. Take one more cycle of breath and lower your chest and forehead back down. Press your palms into the mat by the middle part of your rib cage and tuck your toes Lift your knees up, press yourself up into plank or modify plank with your knees on the ground, and then start to lift your hips up and back and find yourself in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. For those of you who haven't practiced with me recently or regularly, one great modification in downward facing dog is to have your hands on top of your blocks. It's great if your wrists are particularly sensitive. And start to angle your heels out, which will encourage you to rotate the inner part of your thighs towards the back of the room, which gets us deeper into proper alignment for Adho Mukha Svanasana. Press your palms into the mat. Lift up through your forearms, your upper arms shooting out of your shoulders towards the back of the room. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, start to walk your hands back towards your feet till you find yourself in Uttanasana in forward fold. Start with a bend in your knees. It's still early in our practice. Take an inhale and an exhale and interlace your fingers behind your back. Rest your hands on your lower back. Have a bend in your elbows. And now as you inhale, start to straighten your arms and lift your knuckles up towards the ceiling. And then start to straighten your legs, keep a micro bend in your knees. Crown of your head points down towards the ground. And press your palms together, which will help you draw your shoulder blades together. And hear the sound of your breath. Release your hands onto your hips. Keep your gaze on the ground as you start to roll your torso up towards the ceiling, lifting up one vertebra at a time. And once you're standing up straight, turn your gaze to the top 
of the mat and in front of you. And walk towards the top of the mat and stand in Tadasana, in mountain pose. Release your hands from your hips. Arms are alongside your torso. Feet are together or maybe hip width apart if your balance is a little bit off today. Root down through your feet, lift up through your kneecaps, lengthen through all four sides of your torso. Spread your collarbones and draw your shoulder blades together, but soften your belly. And then imagine that there is a little hook on top of your head with a fishing wire tied to it, lifting your head up towards the sky. Take a few cycles of breath in Tadasana. And in just a moment, we'll start with a few half sun salutations. Get our energy flowing. Inhale, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back, Ardha Uttanasana. Your hands might float up to your shins. Exhale back into Uttanasana. And then root into your feet, rise up, Uttita Hastasana. Arms lift up towards the ceiling and exhale, arms come down into Tadasana, into mountain pose. We're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, arms float up, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale into Uttanasana, your forward fold. Inhale, Come halfway up into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward back to Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down into Tadasana. This time I'm only gonna cue the breath, you supply the movement. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. We're going to move on and float through Surya Namaskar C, Sun Salutation C. Inhale, arms float up. Exhale. Uttanasana, folding forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lift halfway up. Exhale, Uttanasana, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back, lower onto your left knee. Again, pat it with a pillow or a blanket or your mat. Untuck your toes. And then inhale, lift your arms up, coming into Anjane Asana. This is a high lunge. Exhale, cactus your arms, which means bend your elbows, lower them down. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head and reach just your upper back towards the back of the room. It's a very slight but powerful back bend. And a back bend is code for heart opener. Inhale, lift the crown of your head back up, lift your torso up straight. Exhale, inhale, arms lengthen up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, lower your hands down, frame your front foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, press your palms into the ground, step your right leg back into plank, or modified plank with your knees down. Shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. You can add a vinyasa if you'd like, which means chaturanga to low cobra or upward facing dog, but I'm just gonna move us on. And then inhale, turn your gaze between your palms, 
Step your left leg forward, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes, inhale, lift your torso and arms up. Exhale, bend your elbows, come back into that cactus shape. Your arms are like goalposts. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head and start to bend just your upper back. A very slight, subtle back bend. Inhale, lift your crown of your head back up. Arms lift up straight. And then with your next exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up and step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. Find yourself in Uttanasana in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. Going to do that again with a different modification. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, this time step your right leg back, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your chest and arms up into Anjane Asana. Exhale, this time lower your arms down, interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with a bend in your elbows and then reach your arms straight Knuckles float towards the back of the room and down towards the ground. And here's that cue to spread your collarbones, draw your shoulder blades together, bend deeper into your left knee. Two more cycles of breath. Release the interlace of your fingers. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands come down. Frame your front foot. Tuck your right toes. Right knee comes up. Step your left leg back, plank, and take the vinyasa, or just meet me in Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Three cycles of breath. Turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step your right foot forward. This time lower onto your left knee. Untuck your left toes. Inhale, torso and arms float up. Exhale, lower your hands down. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Start with that bend in your elbows and then straighten your arms towards the back of the room. Knuckles go back and down couple cycles of breath and take a moment for Svadhyaya, for self-study. What does it mean for you to remove the armor that barricades your heart? What's getting in the way of your heart opening up to others? Inhale, release your hands, arms float up, and then exhale, lower your hands down, press your palms down into the ground, tuck your left toes, left knee floats up, and then step your left foot forward to meet your right foot. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Root into your feet, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. Take a moment, take a few cycles of breath. And I know that there are some folks in the virtual yoga studio who aren't the biggest fans of the repetition of our sun salutations, but I wanna share an idea from Maimonides. One of the great scholars and thinkers and philosophers of Judaism, 
who says that the virtues of character do not come to a person through the greatness of their deeds, but according to the number of deeds. Virtues of character come with repetition of right action many times over. And the connection to chest openers, to opening up our heart, is that the goal isn't one big heart opener, chest opener, one big moment of generosity. It's the repetition. It's getting into a lifestyle of repeated generosity, of regularly opening up our chests and hearts. So let's take sun salutation A. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Flatten your palms, bend your knees. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. You're in plank or modified plank with your knees down. Inhale, shift your torso forward. Exhale, bend your elbows, lower all the way down onto the ground. Untuck your toes for a moment. Inhale, root your palms down, lift your chest and heart up into Bhujangasana, low cobra. Exhale, come down, tuck your toes, push yourself up into plank, and then hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. Take another inhale. And exhale as you reach your chest towards your thighs. Notice I said towards. <laughs> and then with your next inhale, turn your gaze between your palms. Step, step forward, or you can bend your knees and hop forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Going to do another sun salutation, but we're going to take a good amount of time in the middle to do more chest and heart openers. Inhale, arms float up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Step your right leg to meet it. You're in plank or modified plank. And then inhale, shift your torso forward. Shoulders come beyond your wrists. Exhale, bend your elbows, lower five, four, three, two, one. Meet on your belly, untuck your toes, stack your palms one on top of the other and lower your forehead down. So we're gonna take a number of different chest and heart openers. And I wanna come back to what I shared at the start of the practice, which is that you need to be the master of your own yoga practice. So I'm gonna offer several variations and modifications. And the idea is for you to find the one or ones that push you, but don't have you overextending. So pick your forehead up. Press your palms into the mat, fingers facing towards the front of the room by your middle ribs. Lower your forehead back down. Elbows hug into the chest. So already you can see how that is going to help open up your heart. And practice that for a moment. Let your elbows flop open. And now hug them in. Push your palms into the ground. Lift your forehead, chest and heart up. Come back into Bhujangasana, low cobra. Inhale, draw your shoulder blades together. And then exhale, lower down. Good job. If that was plenty for you, stick with that. Otherwise, 
Lengthen your arms alongside your torso. Palms face up. And now inhale, lift your forehead and chest and heart up. Root your feet into the ground, but float your knees up and come into a modified Shalambhasana. Modified locust pose. And then exhale, lower down. Building on, inhale, lift your forehead and chest and heart up. Lift your feet up, but keep your hands on the ground. Draw your thighs towards each other and then rotate your inner thighs up towards the ceiling. One more inhale and exhale. Lower down. Good job. Adding on a little bit more. Inhale, lift your head up, lift your heart up, lift your feet up, lift your arms up. Palms face in towards each other. And this is a traditional Shalambhasana, locust pose. Keep your gaze down on the ground to protect your neck. Take another inhale, lift up higher, and exhale, release. Turn your head to the right and lower onto your left cheek and pause. Take a few slow and steady cycles of breath. And I wanna emphasize the value and relevancy of these modifications and of you figuring out which is the best version of a chest and heart opener for you relates to our abilities to give and our ways of being giving. Each one of us has a different capacity and a different set of attributes and resources and wealth to extend to others who are in need not going to look the same for everyone. We can't all write the same check. We can't all give the same amount of clothing for a donation or food for a donation. We can't all volunteer in the same way. We've got to experiment with our generosity in a way that's true to our hearts. So we're going to keep going with these chest and heart openers. Come back down onto your forehead. And then inhale, lift your head up, chest up, heart up, feet up. Lift your arms up, interlace your fingers, reach your knuckles back. And so in terms of what I just said, some of us might be in this version of Shalambhasana because that's where we're at in our abilities. Others, may not have their fingers interlaced, may not have their arms up. Some people may have their feet on the ground. Some might still be in Bhujangasana with your hands planted into the ground and your fingertips forward. Wherever you are in these poses, you're in the pose. Take one more inhale and exhale, lower down. Turn your head to the left, come onto your right cheek. There's one more version of a chest and heart opener that we're gonna take. So inhale, bend your knees, lift your shins up into the air. And if you're moving on, lift your head and chest up, lengthen your arms towards the back of the room. At the same time, try, try to grab onto your outer ankles, pull your heels towards your tush, draw your shoulder blades together, and then inhale, lift your heart and chest up, knees up, knees come towards each other, and you're in Dhanurasana, a bow pose. Inhale. 
and exhale and inhale and exhale one more inhale and exhale release stack your hands on top of each other lower your forehead back down onto your hand pillows and breathe. And in a moment, we're going to do what's called Yogi's Choice. You're going to pick your preferred ver version of a chest and heart opener among all the different options that we covered, the different versions of Shalambhasana. You might go for Bhujangasana, which is low cobra, or you might choose Dhanurasana, which is bow pose. So position your body in whichever version of the chest and heart opener you're going to take. We're going to hold it for three cycles of breath. So inhale, come up. Wherever you are, spread your collarbones, draw your shoulder blades together. That's one cycle of breath. Inhale. And exhale for two. Inhale, reach up a little bit higher. Exhale, three, and lower down. Press your palms into the ground by your upper ribs, fingertips forward. Those elbows hug back into your chest. Tuck your toes. Push yourself up either onto your knees or into plank position. Press your heels back. And then hips float up and back. Find yourself back in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Great job. Couple cycles of breath. Turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step your right foot forward. Step your left foot to meet it. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward back into Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms lower down, back into Tadasana. Great job. Step your feet out, about three to four feet apart. Heels angle out, toes angle in. Start with your hands on your hips. Prasarita Padottanasana, a wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, lift your chest and heart up. And exhale, hinge at your hips. Root into your feet. Lower your torso down. Lower your fingertips down onto the ground. If your fingertips don't reach the ground, you can use one of your blocks or books. You can also widen your stance, then press your palms down into the ground or into your blocks and lower your forehead down. Take a couple cycles of breath. And hands float up to your hips. Lift your torso up. And second version of Prasarita Padottanasana. Good old interlacing your fingers behind your back. You know the drill by now. Start with a bend in your elbows. Inhale, lift your chest and heart up. And exhale, fold forward, hinging at your hips. When your torso is down, that's when you start to lengthen your arms, reach your knuckles up towards the ceiling and resume your slow and steady cycle of breath.
And I'm doing my own learning around this idea of nedivut, of generosity. I came across what is probably a familiar story to so many of you. It's a story told by the Baal Shem Tov, who says that in the halls of hell, people sit around a great banquet table piled high with food. And each person is given a fork that's six feet in length, far too long to maneuver into their mouths. And they sit bewildered and they're starving, unable to feed themselves. And the Baal Shem Tov goes back over to another banquet hall, the banquet hall of heaven. And there people sit around the exact same banquet table with the same exact forks. But in that banquet hall, each person feeds the person across the table. And in doing so, all are filled. Inhale to rise up. Release the interlace of your fingers, hands back on your hips, step your feet together. And these stories, this wisdom, just accentuate the importance of trying our best to open up our hearts and being incredibly resourceful about how we extend our generosity, showing up for other people, being there. Inhale, arms float up. I'm going to do Gomukhasana again, but the traditional form. Exhale, arms come down. And then inhale, arms out into a T position. And now inhale, lift your right arm up towards the ceiling. Bend your right elbow, lower your right hand to your upper back. And this time, as you exhale, bend your left elbow and loop your left arm down and in back of you. And there are a couple of options. Option number one is to just grab on to opposite ends of your shirt, pull your top arm up, your bottom arm down. My hands are gonna look like the opposite side to you. Don't worry about that. Option number two is to interlace your fingers. So choose your option. Draw your right elbow in towards your head. One more inhale. And exhale. And release your hands from the back of you and arms come back out into a T position. Second side, inhale, left arm up. Bend your left elbow, lower your left hand to your upper back. And then Bend your right elbow, lower your right hand down and in back of you. And same thing, you can either grab on to your shirt and pull your top hand up, your bottom hand down, or you can interlace your fingers. Don't let that left elbow flop open. Rotate it in towards your head. Take another inhale and exhale. You're doing great. One more cycle of breath. And with your next exhale, release your arms out into a T position and lower your arms down alongside your torso. We're gonna to do one more pose before we get to our peak pose. Step to the top of your mat, feet hip width apart, hands on top of your hips. Inhale, step your left leg back and rotate your left toes about 45 degrees towards the top of your mat and see that your heels are either aligned one with the other or wider apart. And then with your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the front of the room. They're gonna naturally angle towards the left. You wanna rotate them towards the front of the room. 
And lo and behold, here we go again with that interlace of our fingers behind our back. Start with a bend in your elbows. If you're a more advanced yogi, you can come into reverse namaste, which means your hands are pressed into each other with your fingertips pointed up towards the ceiling. And then inhale, lengthen up through your torso. And exhale, start to lower your torso over your right leg. So your hands are either in reverse namaste or your fingers are interlaced and your knuckles float up towards the ceiling. Take another inhale and exhale. And again, inhale and exhale. Inhale, lift your torso up. And as you exhale, step your left foot forward, top of the mat, release the interlace of your hands or take your hands out of reverse namaste. Hands come back onto your hips and second side. Inhale, step your right leg back, angle your right toes up 45 degrees towards the top right corner of your mat with your hands on your hips, rotate your hips towards the front of the room, towards the top of your mat. I actually don't know what the front of your room is. And then same thing, either interlace your fingers behind your back, start with your elbows bent, or you can come into reverse namaste. And together we're going to inhale to lift our heart and chest up and exhale folding forward, torso lowers, this time over your left leg. And I talk sometimes about the foundation of our poses. So in this pose, your foundation is both of your feet. That's the part of your body that's rooted into the ground. So root firmly into your back foot, your front foot, Press down through all four sides of your feet. Draw your right hip forward. Your left hip pull back. That's what's gonna center your hips. One more inhale. And exhale. And then inhale, lift your torso up. Exhale, step your right foot forward towards the top of the mat and release your hands. Excellent job. It is time for our peak pose, Lord of the Dance. You guys are doing a great job. This is a wonderful, wonderful chest opener, heart opener, and introduces a little bit of balance. So we're gonna do a couple different versions depending on where you're at in your practice. And you, can, and you can watch as I demonstrate the first version. I'm gonna shift the weight of my body onto my left foot. I'm gonna bend my right knee, float my right heel up towards my tush. I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna grab onto the inner part of my ankle and then reach my right knee down towards the ground. I'm gonna press my left thumb and index finger together and lift my left arm up towards the ceiling. And then I'm gonna to start to lower my torso forward while lifting my head up and my chest up. So torso comes forward as your heart and chest Go forward and up. Left arm comes up. Right knee continues to point down. We'll stay for a couple cycles of breath and then come up and release our right foot. Now, we haven't practiced with any sense of balance today. So if this is intimidating, use the wall for balance. It's totally fine. In which case you'll face the wall, You'll put your left hand on the wall and you can still do this pose. 
but have the support of the wall. Totally connects to what we were practicing earlier, everybody to their ability. The point is to engage in these repeated actions, but how we do it is gonna look different on all of us. So, Lord of the Dance, shift the weight of your body into your left foot. Bend your right knee, right heel floats up towards your tush. Take your right hand, grab onto your inner right ankle, and then lower your right knee back down towards the ground. Press your left thumb and index finger together. Lift your left arm up, and then start to lower your torso forward and down while you simultaneously shine your chest and heart forward and up. A few cycles of breath. One more inhale and then exhale, rise up, lower your left hand down, release your right ankle and lower your right foot down. Great job. Second side, shift the weight of your body onto your right foot, bend your left knee, grab onto your inner left ankle, and then point that left knee down, using the wall for balance or a chair for balance. And then Press your right thumb and index finger together as you raise your right arm up towards the ceiling. Start to lower your torso forward and down as you shine your chest and heart up. Left knee hugs in towards the midline, rooting down into all four sides of your standing foot. Talk about a pose of generosity. You're reaching your hand forward. You're opening up your chest. And then inhale, rise up, release your ankle, and lower your left foot down and your right arm down. Great job. Two options. Option number one is to stick with that first pose. Option number two, if you're practicing with a strap or a rope, make a big loop out of it. And you're gonna step your right foot into the loop and grab onto the upper part of your strap with your right hand. So if you're sticking with the previous version, just take it again. If you're moving on, you're gonna again shift the weight of your body into your left foot. You're gonna bend your right knee and reach your right arm in back of you and then lift your right foot up with your strap. And then lift your left arm up and grab onto that, to that loop. Draw your elbows in towards each other and bend forward. It's a way to optimize the opening of the chest. Take one more cycle of breath and then exhale, lower down. And second side. So whichever version of the pose you're taking, you're in the pose, you might be in sphinx. You might be back on the belly doing one of those chest openers. This is your practice. So shift the weight this time onto your right foot, bend your left knee, reach your left hand back, and then draw your left hand up, lift your right arm up, and reach your right hand into that loop. Draw your elbows in towards each other, reach your chest out. One more inhale and exhale. Torso comes up, left foot down 
and hands release. Great job. Put the strap off to the side. If you were practicing with one, we're standing in Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold forward, bend your knees, and sit down onto your tush. Extend your legs forward. So we're going to take a counter pose. Done all this chest and heart opening. We're going to take another forward fold. Inhale, lift your arms up. And exhale, reach your torso down towards your thighs. Hands come onto your shins your ankles or your feet. Take a few cycles of breath. Breathing in and out. Release your hands from your feet. Lift your torso up. Bend your right knee. Place your right foot outside of your left leg. And then inhale, arms float up. Exhale, lower your right hand down and back of you and twist over to the right. You can either lower your left hand onto the outside of your right knee or you can use your left elbow to make a hook. Flex your left foot so that your toes point up towards the ceiling and rotate your left ribs over to the right. And one cautionary note as we begin to wind down our practice around this idea of nedivut, of generosity, which is that while we are positioning ourselves to be open-hearted, extremely generous, there are also moments where we need to exercise some restraint. Come back towards the center, extend your right leg out, bend your left knee, place your left foot outside of your right leg, inhale, arms up. Exhale, lower your left hand down and back of you, fingertips towards the back of the mat, and lower your right hand down to grab onto your left knee or hook your right elbow outside of your left knee. And this idea of restraint is that we need to give within our means and also practice some self-care. So like everything in life, generosity is a spectrum. And we want to routinely work on opening up our hearts so that we can be quite generous. But we also want to make sure we don't go all the way to the extreme end of generosity, such that we have nothing left to give and nothing left for ourselves. Come back to the center. Extend your left leg forward. And then lower down onto your back. Let your shins float up towards the ceiling. Take your arms inside your legs, but grab your hands onto the outer parts of your feet, come into a happy baby pose, and just slowly rotate from right to left, and left to right. For those of you who received and read the email that I circulated about this practice, you might remember that I referenced the Shel Silverstein book, The Giving Tree. And as beautiful as that story is, it's also an important lesson in restraint. By the end of the book, 
The boy that the tree loves and gives to has taken every single thing that the tree could possibly offer. And the tree is reduced to nothing but a stump. So it's amazing to give up our resources, but we've also got to sustain ourselves so that we can continue to show up for other people. And so we take our last Shavasana, extend your legs forward. And if you want to take advantage of the restorative Shavasanas that we've been practicing recently in this yoga class, you can choose to do so. You can make a tower out of your blocks with your pillow. The one I recommend for the end of this practice is to have your top block on the medium height, your bottom block on the lower height. Spread your pillow on top of that tower and then lower down so that your head is propped up a little bit higher than usual. Arms alongside your torso, ankles roll open. And settle into your cycle of breath. The beauty of Shavasana is that opportunity to rest and digest, to refuel, so that we can then get up and again, open our hearts towards others. Take another inhale and exhale. Draw your knees into your chest and then lower your knees towards the right side of the room. Roll over onto the right side of your torso. Push yourself up into a seated position. Hands on top of your knees. And in our search to be generous, in our commitment to opening up our hearts, I certainly want to take a moment to acknowledge the deep, deep loss that occurred this past week in Atlanta, Georgia, when once again, an expression of hate and fear culminated in the loss of life, in the degradation of other people, whether it was hate, intolerance, prejudice, racism, Whatever those forces were, they certainly weren't reflective of an open heart. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And I just want to come back to this notion that Maimonides shares. That it's not about the magnitude or value of any one generous deed in which we engage but instead the regularity of our intentions to be generous. So I hope that you have regular opportunities to lower the armor of your hearts to let your true, wonderful, beautiful nature shine forward. 
Inhale. And exhale, lower your chin to your chest. Namaste, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so, so much for your presence and your practice.